central India, a mountainous area extends 500 kilometers across the province of Madhya Pradesh. The mountains and the accompanying forest belt still contain approximately half of the forests and habitats of the country's wildlife. These are the jungles that inspired Kipling in his book on the virgin lands, and even today, they are still the best preserved in the whole of India. Located in these forested lands are the Bandhavgarh, Shivpuri and Kana National Parks, probably the best places in the world for watching tigers. Kana National Park is considered the Gorongoro of India. The physical similarity is relative because, although it is not a crater, the surrounding hills are the result of ancient volcanic activity. What really gives substance to the comparison, in fact, is the variety of animal species that live within it. Because in Kana, one can still enjoy what the marvelous natural heritage of India must have been only a century or so ago. Kana encloses a great variety of habitats. There are different types of forest that range from dense bamboo thickets to mixed deciduous forest and extensive grasslands, growing lush grasses that form the staple diet of the majority of the park's herbivores. The different species of ungulates living in Kana are the staple diet of the carnivores, among which are the tigers, which is why they are indispensable to the reserve's ecological balance. One of the park's main zoological jewels are the barasingas, or marsh deer. Their food source are the grasses that grow in the pastures of the nalas, or muddy plains. The tall and compact grasses grow on the muddy plains even in summer, given the high humidity level, and they provide a hideout for the herbivores and their young. None of the names attributed to this deer is appropriate. In the local language, Barasinga means 12 points and refers to the deer's horns. But adult males generally have between 10 and 14 branches, some having as many as 20. The name of marsh deer is not correct either and should be used for a more common subspecies because in Kana, the only place in which they survive, there are no real marshes and this subspecies, although living its daily life on the muddy plains, has hoofs that are adapted for running on hard ground. At the end of the 19th century, the Barasinga abounded throughout central India. Fifty years later, in the middle of this century, only 3,000 were left, and in 1970, only 66 Barasinga survived here, being the only representatives of their subspecies remaining in the world. The emergency measures taken to protect the last Barasingas succeeded in raising the population to 550 by 1988, and since this date, their number has been increasing slowly. The key to the recovery and survival of these deer is based on the preservation of their habitat, 
tall grasses. In order to do this, grazing had to be prohibited in specific areas and certain villages had to be relocated outside the park boundaries. If more tall grasslands were obtained, there would be more food for the Barasingas, but in particular, breeding of the species would be encouraged, since these deer do not reproduce without a sea of grasses where they can hide their young from predators.